The Commission on Appointments on Wednesday delays the confirmation of Foreign Affairs Secretary Perfecto Yasay Jr. over his citizenship issue. Yasay is a no-show at his confirmation hearing. San Juan Representative Ronaldo Zamora cites a Raptor article showing Yasay, despite his denial, owned American passports. Zamora says Yasay hasn't responded to their questions. Yasay claims he was never an American and never owned U.S. passports. Raptor cites at least four independent sources. The Armed Forces of the Philippines says it will engage in localized peace talks with communist rebels. The government earlier announced it was scrapping peace talks. AFP Chief Eduardo Año says the military has done this even before the resumption of peace talks with the National Democratic Front under the Duterte administration. Año is referring to the military's Oplan Bayanihan, a strategy it adopted in dealing with the New People's Army under the Aquino administration. Under Oplan Bayanihan, the military sought to convince rebels to give up their arms and return to mainstream society by offering them livelihood programs. I'm sure there are so many NPS that really wanted to go back to the mainstream. Let's give them the chance. Hindi naman lahat ng NPS gusto makipaglaban. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez says he'll strip lawmakers of their House leadership titles if they oppose the death penalty bill. Alvarez says, quote, If you're a deputy speaker, it's not agreeable that you're against the administration-sponsored bill. The House is debating the revival of the death penalty, a priority measure of President Rodrigo Duterte. The death penalty was abolished during former President and now Pampanga Representative Gloria Arroyo's term. Arroyo, an ally of Duterte, continues to oppose their imposition of the death penalty. Buhay Party List Representative Lito Atienza warns Alvarez he'll lose administration allies if he'll force them to vote in favor of the death penalty. Alvarez says lawmakers from PDP Laban, Duterte's party, who oppose the death penalty won't be sanctioned. He adds he won't stop them from resigning from the party. A former Colombian president in an op-ed piece from the New York Times says Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte should learn from Colombia's experience that a drug war solely reliant on police and military might is unwinnable. Cesar Gaviria, Colombian president from 1990 to 1994, says he learned the hard way, that using force in fighting the drug war doesn't work. He adds the drug war only worsened Colombia's drug problem instead of containing it. Gaviria says, quote, The war on drugs is essentially a war on people. Gaviria, who is now part of the Global Commission on Drug Policy, says the decrease in supply and demand of narcotics will come through improving public health safety and strengthening anti-corruption measures. He adds decriminalizing drug use and better regulation of drugs for medical and recreational uses are the smartest pathway to address the problem. Duterte slams Gaviria for his comments. Colombia has been lecturing about man, that idiot. The United States Justice Department asks the Federal Court of Appeals to reinstate President Donald Trump's controversial travel ban on travelers and refugees from seven Muslim-majority countries. The White House defends the travel ban as essential for national security, but its critics claim it violates the U.S. Constitution by targeting people based on their religion. Trump's order triggered worldwide protests. The hearing doesn't touch on the constitutionality of the decree itself, which is challenged in court by two U.S. states. A ruling is likely to come later this week.